Last time, we learned about the stack and the heap. Now, let's nail down static memory. Static objects are initialized only once. Let's look at this static count variable. While you might think it initializes every time we run the lambda, it actually just initializes once and then retains its value across multiple calls. When we run this, you'll see the count increment from zero to then one. The key here is the static object's address. It's fixed and known from the start, and it's actually placed in the static memory segment of your program. One good use for this is in making a factory. In the get registry function, the map object that's returned is static and will always remain the same address for the lifetime of the program. Note the keys and the values we jam into the map are still allocated on the heap. This is cool because we can actually shift the cost of initialization by populating the map before the main function even runs. See the attribute constructor bit of code? This attribute forces the registration of comp A during static initialization, again, before the main function even runs. We can also use a simple global static struct, like initializer b. Its constructor runs automatically, registering comp b before any user code executes. This method centralizes the heap allocation cost to startup. When main executes, the map is already built, leading to lightning fast component lookup. Mastering static addresses versus dynamic content is super important for high performance C++. Follow to learn about thread local storage next time.